Lego History Sam says he's coming to Minnesota. All thank right. you for checking out History X. My name is, and actually, thank you for checking out Museum Ship Mafia. My name is Ken Stano from History X. Oh. Thank God no one's watching right now. Are you serious? We have like zero viewers. No, 13. No, 13. Oh, there it goes. Clicked in 13. All right. So, uh, yeah, tonight, thank you for checking out Museum Ship Mafia. Uh, as I said a few moments ago, my name is Ken Stano. We're going to be talking about what has been trending when it comes to, I don't know, not just the museum ship community, although it's kind of a big deal. But when you see the uh, USS New Jersey, you know, going down the river to dry dock, that's kind of a big deal. So we're going to be talking about the USS New Jersey's entry into dry dock uh, this evening. I've got some amazing photographs that I feel everyone needs to see. So that's going to be the subject for tonight. We've got Connor up in the upper left-hand corner from the Transportation Museum of Thunder Bay. I'm in the upper right. My name is Ken from the YouTube channel History X. Shane Stevenson from the Buffalo Naval Park, lower right-hand corner. And tonight, special guest, Tim Nesmith, superintendent of the USS Kid. And uh, since we're going to be talking about the New Jersey going into dry dock, it's good that we've got Shane on here tonight because we do need a naval architect and structural engineer to comment on this. Um, Shane, why are you spinning around? You went... <laughs> you went well. You went to school for naval architecture, correct? Also, also called library school. Yes. What What's the difference? So, um, yeah, and and I find this subject fascinating, as uh, everybody else seems to in the museum ship community. Connor Kilgore, who is one of the administrators for the museum ships Facebook group. How many people, if you were to guess? have been talking about the New Jersey going into dry dock? Well, it's a little less now, but I would say probably over the last week and a half, probably everyone. Um, <laughs> but to give you a perspective of just how fast that's grown, uh, keep in mind, we are just a single Facebook page, but uh, we went from 64, uh, six, no, 67.4 thousand members to 85.8. Uh, in under a week as a result. And uh, we're still getting between two to four, 500 a day. And you're going to contribute that, you're going to contribute that to what? Uh, the New Jersey, uh, the New Jersey and to a lesser extent, the Texas, because, uh, basically whenever you guys go into dry dock now, we see a boost. Yeah. And, and when the Texas went into dry dock, <sighs> Oh, I don't know. We'd been doing video podcasts probably for about six months. Does that sound about right, Shane? I, I want to say about maybe six months. Yeah. And, and when we did that, when we kind of talked about the Texas, again, it was kind of like some gossiping kind of stuff. We had some pictures. We would have liked to have had Travis on from the Texas, but you know he wasn't available. And yet it was one of our higher viewed episodes. And so now with the New Jersey going into dry dock, why wouldn't we do it again? You know, a lot of people want to hear, you know, you know, our thoughts on it. And, and like I said, I've got some fantastic photos and, uh, John Epp not available tonight, but we got Tim joining us from the USS kid. You hey, guys, I, I want to thank you for that accidents on board a museum ship. <laughs> oh, uh, you're very welcome. Yeah, that, that's far ahead. <laughs> that video yeah, did we, great on our channel. It got like 33,000 views or something. Thank you. On, on, on the Buffalo Naval Park channel. Yeah. 33,000, I think. No kidding. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty that's not really fair because I didn't get near those numbers on the kid channel. And I'm I don't I don't think history X did either. So if if you guys did not tune in with us a, uh, a month ago, Tim Nesmith, superintendent from the USS Kid, had an unfortunate accident where in the process of firing the guns on the USS Kid destroyer USS Kid Mount 52, had an accident where uh, uh, part of his right hand was blown away in an explosion and so yeah tim was nice enough to give us his time and tell us about that story as well as his recovery so if you haven't seen that episode check out um my channel history x check out the buffalo naval park check out the uss slater and i believe it should also be posted on the uss kids yeah. youtube channel yes 
simply go to YouTube and search for USS Kids Veterans Museum and it'll come right up. Check out that episode. It was a lot of, it was very interesting, but it was also a lot of fun because we always like having Tim on here and he he took us behind the scenes on, on the tragedy, but you see his right hand pop up in the screen every once in a while. It just kind of makes you smile. So yeah, check out that episode. I had no idea it got 33,000 views in the Buffalo Naval Park. I'm kind of angry about that. <laughs> I know. That's why I said it. Yeah, but, yeah. but to, 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 I directed a lot of the comments back to you, Tim, because oh. they were like, why didn't they do this? And why didn't they do that? Or they, did they try that? Or whatever happened to Teresa, whatever happened to his fingers, you know? So, uh, I tried to say, please contact, you know, please contact them. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I'll look for the comments. Well, all right. Before we get into the uh, New Jersey and the dry docking. So Tim last month, I'm yeah. glad to have you back with us. Thank you. Um, and for those of you that are wondering where John Epp is, we actually, it wasn't really working. Um, so, and, and it's kind of a sad thing. So we removed him from uh, Museum Ship Mafia. And now we've got Tim. So uh, it was good with John Epp while it lasted. But now, Tim, we're happy to have him. I think it'll be a lot better. Yeah, John had a good run. I yeah, agree. it was a good run. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so how did you feel about, uh, after you got off with us last week, talking about your, uh, your, your tragedy on the kid? How did I feel? Yeah. How did you feel? Uh, I went to bed. <laughs> oh. Good answer. All right. <laughs> I was tired. I had to get up the next morning and do dry dock prep. That's why we've got him. That's why we've got him replacing John up. He's, he's a, you know, all right. So, okay. The USS New Jersey, um, obviously went into action during world war ii this is a picture of it going into um hell where was it launched uh it was launched where she is now yeah, in philadelphia. philadelphia okay all right all right so yeah fantastic image um and we're going to be talking about you know just some of these fantastic photos now that it's in dry dock um and uh, actually you know what for those of you that that aren't aware, like I said, we've got Connor and we've got Shane and we've got uh, Tim from the USS kid. They are all connected to museum ships. So for, you know, if you're really interested in the subject, these guys aren't just, you know, viewers, they are connected with museum ships. And one of the things that I want them to talk about was, I think if I'm not mistaken, during the HINSA conference, probably during the last two HINSA conferences, didn't the New Jersey make presentations about the process going into dry dock? Um, we, it was the, the Texas really. Texas I, did. I, yeah. The Texas did. They did the past two Hinza symposiums. They're called symposiums. Let's correct that. Hey. Um, they did the past two years was updates with the Texas. I'm sure it was being discussed. I, Tim, I don't remember it in Albany that they actually I, did a presentation. I recall anything on New Jersey. Connor, you were a table across from me. You may remember differently. Yeah, no, I was at the same table as Ryan. If I don't remember, then... Uh, there, there you go. Uh, what was the Texas? Cod did, it okay. to, Cod did it in 21, I remember. Yeah. And then they did one on the dry docking for the Nautilus. Uh, yeah, Nautilus got a dry docking one at Albany. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember one on Orlick, and I don't remember one on Ingum. There have been a lot of them doing it. Uh, yeah. In fact, LST-325 passed us uh, two weeks ago on the wow. way back home coming from Dry Dock. So a lot of ships are dry docking right now. It's a it's a hot topic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would just like to say uh, I'd like to thank whoever runs uh, the LST-325 uh, group as well as their uh, – their team, they were posting on museum ships during their trip back up to uh, Evansville. So thank you for keeping our community in mind while you were posting your updates. It's always great to see. Well, and as Tim mentioned a few moments ago, dry docking, it is kind of a hot topic. The USS Kid is preparing to go into dry dock. The uh, USS, the Sullivans is preparing to go, go, go into dry dock. And so with that being said, let me back up a couple of moments here and pull this picture up. <clears throat> Is it dry dock, all one word, or is it dry dock, two separate words? 
Miriam Webster's will define dry dock as all one word process of uh, lifting a ship out of the water for maintenance or display. Whereas Encyclopedia Britannica, as well as Oxford Dictionary, will actually have it listed as two separate words. Yeah, I'm seeing results for both. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think they're interchangeable. One is the Admiralty way, one is the American way. <laughs> so, so for tonight's purposes, we are making the word dry dock all one word. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear any complaints. I don't want to hear any bitching. You know, we're, we're, we're going with one word tonight, all right? all right? But yes, we do recognize the fact that some leading uh, authorities might actually break it up into two words. Uh, all right, so with that being said, uh, Philadelphia, or, uh, New Jersey goes into or is launched in the Philadelphia River. And so we've got some fantastic photos to share with you guys. I'm always, you know, when these things are posted, I, I'm, I'm just ripped, you know, fascinated. I mean, look at these propellers out of the water, you know, 20 plus years. I mean, have you guys seen these pictures yet? I've seen a few of them, but not a lot. I've, I've kind not of not this one off social media. So. Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, someone that actually get, you know, pays attention, you'll see some of the propellers, four blades, some of them, five blades that leads a lot of conversation. You know, why is that and, you know, for me personally, I'm just like fascinated to see these things, you know, in general. So let's, let's walk through the process. So the, uh, the New Jersey had to go through, a tremendous amount of preparation in order to make the trip. It's very similar to what the kid has been going through over the last several weeks. You're talking about in the case of the New Jersey, you know, cutting pieces of the mast off so that it could fit under this bridge so that it could make the trip over to the shipyard. Um, so, I mean, Tim, why don't you tell why don't you tell some of the you know viewers some of the stuff that you guys have been doing to the kid in order to prepare it for going into dry dock? Uh, well, the primary thing we've been focusing on right now is uh, getting artifacts off, uh, anything flammables. Uh, so you know a lot of one of the kind one of kind stuff that you're not going to be able to replace. We're getting that off and getting it off. Uh, and then uh, from the maintenance standpoint, we've been going through and chalk testing all the watertight hatches uh, and doorways uh, and making sure that we have a complete seal on them. Um, removing a lot of stuff. When Tim Rizzuto was ship superintendent, uh, he they still had the World War II ships out in the reserve fleet. So he regularly went to these strip trips and would grab pieces and parts off of ships that would fit kid and and he did the same thing if he found one for kid but there were two of them on the ship he'd grab one for slater slater wasn't around at that point but, uh she was still in greece but he knew dessa the destroyer association was going to be um looking for a ship and restoring a ship if not Stewart and galveston then another uh de somewhere so he would grab them one too and send it off to new york uh, to their warehouse up there uh, so we have a hold, like all of our magazine spaces are just chock full of these old World War II pieces and parts, and we're emptying those out. Uh, and some of that stuff is really, really heavy. Uh, <laughs> we, we're fortunate that we have a um, confined spaces group. We got four or five that come and practice confined spaces rescue on the ship. And so some of that cold war stuff that we that we had had cut off and i say we Rizzuto had had cut off back in the day uh early days of the restoration ended up down in our 40 millimeter magazine and there was no way we were climbing in that hole and trying to lift that thing in that confined space so these guys rigged up their little pulleys and tripods and everything and they got it they spent about three hours lifting some of this stuff out and just moving it from the main deck ashore and and getting it in the van and taking it to offsite storage was just a massive effort on our part. We we told them get vertical and then we'll do the horizontal. And I mean the horizontal is heavy. Mm -hmm. So uh, stuff like that, just getting ready. Um, it's really going to accelerate in the next few weeks. And I don't know if I'm ready for it, but we got to do it. So. 
uh, and that's for the USS Kid, which is the Fletcher, Fletcher class destroyer. Um, obviously, a well, not this one. Obviously, a fraction of the size of the New Jersey, but you know, regardless, it doesn't matter. Your checklist, your to-do list, has got to be a mile long. Let's see here. All right, bear with me a second. We are going to be digging into some of these pictures. Damn it. All right. So um, as the uh, New Jersey pulled away from the dock, some some cute little pictures, you know, like here's a tugboat, you know, out the, uh, I don't think that's technically a hawser, but, you know, you get the, you get the point. So there's some, some of these cute photos, but then some of these other pictures going down the river, I thought this was pretty impressive, you know, with the guns elevated going down the river. It, it must have been phenomenal to be able to ride aboard this as it was being transported. You know, you see the tugboats at the side, but they've got the flags flying. Um, you know, pretty cool stuff. So if, if anyone was able to be standing on the shoreline or lucky enough to be on board, I don't know, pretty impressive, pretty proud moment. You guys have any thoughts about that? Um, well, two things for starters, I'm very envious of the people who didn't get to go aboard uh, during the move. Yeah. How could uh, that be? Yeah. Um, but another thing I kind of noticed I found interesting. It, it's hard when you look at photos like these, it's hard for you to grasp the size of these ships. And like, I learned that with little rock, like she's massive. Um, but for me, when I was watching the New Jersey live stream and it was, a, uh, I think it was, I think it was NBC. They were doing their helicopter flying around the ship as she went down the river. There was a tour boat following behind and that tour boat, or one of the boats anyway, had almost the same dimensions as my, as the ship I'm with. And I was just thinking to myself, whoa, okay. <laughs> like the sheer amount of work that has gone into this project leading up to their, their dry docking has been immense. And I mm -hmm. kind of wonder what's busier now. Like was the prep work getting into dry dock the more busy part or was the actual dry docking the hard part now that they're in so who knows but yeah, yeah. just blows me away the amount of work you gotta do yeah i think for the uh i think and that's what connor just said kind of sparked it uh, for a ship of this size what is it 890 feet long or roughly around 885 or something like that yeah something like that. um the prep work is astronomically more than like the kid or the Sullivans. Uh, so regardless of what the everything looks like, or, you know, if they're just going in to scrape and paint and cathode, you know, get a, the new cathodes uh, system put on, uh, just the amount of spaces that they have to check is uh, just astronomical compared to uh, even, even the Little Rock. I mean, they have, what are they, four fire rooms and four engine rooms? you know, on a battleship like that. And mm -hmm. so it's just the, the amount of prep work is astronomical. And I don't know if you were in a condition like the Sullivan's, if that could be done with a battleship, it better yeah. go into dry dock when she's still very uh, secured and watertight, because if something happened like it did with the Sullivan's, it would, there's just too many spaces to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So well, it's, it's more yeah. of that preparation and, uh, it's more of the prep work and the pre preserving work as opposed to repair almost. And that might be what we're seeing here with this one. One of, one of the more interesting parts of the process that I never saw coming was before it, the New Jersey even went into dry dock, it had to pull into, it had to pull, pull alongside another dock. And the reason for this was because it had to take on 2,000 tons of water inside the hull, 2,000 tons of water to make sure that when it finally was resting on the bracing in the cribs, that it would rest evenly 
and that it wouldn't rock or anything like that. And I found that pretty interesting. I, I never knew that was that would be necessary. Uh, I think it was 2,000 tons. Yeah, it was around 2,000 tons. Okay, about the yeah. weight, a weight of weight of kid or the Sullivans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they ran these 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 hoses into the what the hell are these spaces called? Um, the voids, the peak void tanks. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen Shane do a lot of videos crawling through these and everything like that. So it's like, oh, okay. When I saw the hose, it's like they just snaked these things down there and they just started pumping water into the ship. Um, yeah, and that's what they're there for, especially the peak tank, right? Is to try and give that extra balance uh, while the ship is in service, of course. But yeah, I mean, they're for flooding, you know, just to keep that, uh, you know, just to keep awake. Okay. In the balance. On what Shane was saying a moment ago, the, the immense size of the battleship versus the destroyer, that picture that you just had, you see them looking down. Each one of those has one of these. I'm pointing at the screen. Nobody can see what I'm pointing at. The the watertight hatch right there on the right. Each one of those has that going down, and you've got to check all of those according to the Coast Guard. Make sure they're all watertight. You got to make sure nothing is leaking during the trip, which means you're going down and up, down and up, down and up, all down the length over and the breadth over. And for us, for me and Shane, the tallest point below the main deck, which is what the Coast Guard's concerned about, is four decks. That's it. You've got three deck. You've got the O1, the first platform. You've got the second platform. And then you've got the magazine spaces. And then just a tiny little crawl space underneath that. That's it. For them, look down that hole in that picture. And that's what they've got the whole length of the battleship to check. So mm -hmm. a battleship or a carrier is an immense job. And death on the legs and knees yeah i think that what do they have they have a battleship to kind of confirm what tim's saying they have a second deck a splinter deck a third deck a first platform a second platform and then the holds maybe i don't know so six right. second deck splinter deck third first second yeah i mean so we're looking at it maybe at least six decks yeah which i'd like to point out the henry is only six decks <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. All the way up to all the way down. Yeah, from the from from the wheelhouse oh, to the most cool. accessible deck the, to the engine deck. Yeah. And what's yeah. the displacement of the Henry? Uh, two thousand one hundred tons. Okay, yeah. So yeah, like like Shane and uh, Tim were saying, it was hey. taking what. Are you calling us 2,000 tons ourselves? <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, like they were saying, it's like you're talking about the uh, New Jersey taking on the amount of water, you know, equal Which I should, I should say that is her unloaded, uh, fully loaded. She was rated at uh, 2,500. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's see, moving on. We've got a ton more pictures. For those of you just, just tuning in, my name's Ken from the YouTube channel History X. And tonight we're going to be covering the dry dock. We're going to be gossiping about the dry dock process for the battleship USS New Jersey. Uh, about a week and ago, uh, a week ago, Shane and I were talking about trying to figure out: Did this really happen? <laughs> <laughs> you know, or is this just a publicity? Sp uh, publicity. Yeah. Sp fake news. Fake news. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think I saw that mus the magician there, right? Yeah, uh, I, I, I can, I contend this is real. Uh, Shane, on the other hand. Oh, yeah. all right. So, all okay, right. Man, thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> old Tugs is going to make a comment. So, as as it's going down the river. Oh, hello, Rick. Yeah. And like I said, it had to pull up, take on 2,000 tons of ballast. They ran these hoses in <laughs> voids. Literally, yeah, exactly, Eric. <laughs> oh, yeah, generated. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> pull that up. That was perfect timing. That was great. So, um, that's fantastic. No wonder she's missing her mast, of course, because AI just can't get everything right. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, it eventually made it into uh, dry dock. And I like this picture. If you go to the Battleship New Jersey's Instagram or Facebook page, I don't think it was on their YouTube channel, but it was on their Facebook page. They had a time lapse 
of the New Jersey being brought into the dry dock. So it's not terribly long, you know, maybe 30 seconds, but I thought it was very interesting because the end result is this photo right here where it's brought in the dry dock. They close the doors. New Jersey is floating, of course. And uh, another photo here heading into dry dock, but eventually, you know, and this, this, this photo here, I think it was the, the, the draining process had just been started. Um, side by side, you've got the nose, the bow of the battleship coming into dry dock, the doors closing. And then after the water has been drained, you're left with this. And I like seeing this side by side. So I strongly recommend or encourage anyone that finds this, these kind of photos fascinating. They are now on the Battleship New Jersey's Facebook and Instagram uh, pages. Definitely check them out. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay, so moving on. The uh, images that were released and I got my hands on the propellers. Mm. And I've, if, if those of you, those of you that are familiar with museum ship mafia and the USS, the Sullivan's I've made comments to Shane in the past, you know, the Sullivan's their propellers have been removed. Um, I've wanted Shane to do a video about where the propellers are now. They aren't too far away, but I'm fascinated by the propellers and taking a look, taking a close look at some of these pictures, you're going to see some of the propellers have five blades and some have four. Was that for maneuvering? What was the reason for that? Believe it or not, uh, the, I believe the five blade propellers were for speed. And the four blade propellers for the out outboard were for power. Okay. And so to your question, was it for maneuvering? I think because the outboard propellers were designed for power, there's your maneuvering. Straight line, those five, five blade propellers were for speed. Now, if, yeah, Lego history, Sam, I, I love this comment here. No, it's just for the rattling of the ship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but any anyone anyone viewing, if they've got a more uh, detailed uh, answer to that question, throw your comments into the comments section. We'd love to hear it. So, so yeah. would the so would the inner blades be rotating at a higher RPMs than the outboard than no. one and four? No, I believe the I believe the inboard propellers, the five blade propellers, would be rotating at the same RPMs as the outboard propellers. But because the inboard propellers have five blades, they would be helping to propel the ship at a higher speed. And the four blades, I believe, on the outboard, I believe they take a bigger bite out of the water. Uh, apparently, New Jersey did a video yesterday explaining this whole thing. So we exactly. might just. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. And uh, let's see, Connor. Yeah, thanks for that. I appreciate yeah. that. So yeah, uh, go to their YouTube channel. And I think it's also on Instagram. They explain this in depth. But I wanted to post these uh, images here because I find them interesting. You you take a look at just a picture like this. It's like, okay, cool. Ships in dry dock, ships out of the water, and they're the propellers. But take a close look. Yeah, some have five blades, some have four. And it's an interesting discussion as to why. What I notice is the lack of marine life. Mm -hmm. um, like where the USS Cod and us will just be covered in zebra mussels. Yeah. I yeah. don't see any marine life. And this is probably shortly after. There's still, I would think, uh, shortly uh, from after. What, from what I've marine. been told, a part of it is due to the fact that the river they're in is very fast moving. Uh, so there's like very little time for a lot of plant life to actually grow on the ship. Uh, meanwhile, as well, they don't have zebra mussels. Right. That's true. Uh, I mean, this, this here, like when I look at the New Jersey's hull, this very much reminds me of what the Henry looked like last time she was dry docked. And, uh, it was very similar in the sense that no zebra mussels, uh, limited plant life because she was in a dry dock already and uh so 
it doesn't surprise me all that much. I uh, now, granted, we are also spoiled by Texas. We're expecting absolutely horrible conditions everywhere. Um, but she's in great shape, all in all. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that hmm. I I found interesting was all right. Yeah, no marine growth. Everything looks pretty cool. Um, why aren't the propellers bronze colored? You know, why aren't they that polished bronze copper oh. color? And if you take a look at the New Jersey's video, which I, I think Connor's right. I think that was last night. They actually painted the propellers. And, and apparently the reason they did this was, you know, dissimilar metals, dissimilar metals cause corrosion. You know, if you've got, if you've got, in this case, bronze in close proximity to steel, you've got, you know, one of those metals will deteriorate or corrode at a higher rate than the other. So what they did and I'm, I can't remember if this was when the New Jersey went into the mothball fleet or when it was, I think it was dry dock before it became a museum ship. One of those times they, they painted the propellers so that the propellers wouldn't interact with the steel hull. Hmm. And, and I found that interesting. Um, so do you know what the deal is with the, uh, the Sullivan's propellers? Uh, meaning what? Were they painted at all? No, they were not painted. They are they are the discolored as you'd get with bronze in uh, in water. Uh, so there was some degradation there's, but they weren't uh, in any way painted to my knowledge. And the and the kids' propellers aren't painted, are they, Tim? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we've heard, of course, bimetallic weldings. You know, certainly in our superstructures, everyone else's superstructures, you get steel and then uh, uh, aluminum. You know, and then that always degrades at that joint there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's an interesting point. But what is the what are we looking at here? Are we just looking at years of sitting in the water, or is that the paint that we're looking at? I, it's hard for me to see. But. I, you know what? I think that's a good yeah. question. I, I think it's a combination of both. You know, it looks like there's some growth on there, but I think also after they had uh, hit the propellers with the pressure uh, pressure washer, and let me change pictures here. Yeah, so you see some marine growth there. So I think this is before they pressure washed it, it is it is before because uh you'll notice the dry dock isn't fully dry yet ah good point yep 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 good point good point but also but oh, wait hold on if go back to that one that you just showed yeah all right stand by bear with me a second sorry I thank you think that look at those rudders oh my god yeah 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 <laughs> uh let's see those rudders are crooked <laughs> are, yeah. you talking about, are you talking about this one, Shane? No, the one that was more straight on that you said was like you can see the marine growth. Other way. One more. That one. Ah. Okay. But if you look, I don't know if it's just the camera, but look in the uh, port side four bladed prop and look at the upper right prop. It looks like it's been cleaned or yes. is it an optical illusion? Or... No, I think you're right. Yeah, it looks like it's been cleaned. Yeah. It's hard, or it's yeah. it's interesting, or maybe it was just protected, you know, where they were. I don't know. It's interesting because if you look at the one, even the one as it's going clockwise around, the one right below it doesn't seem that degraded or yeah. with a lot of marine growth on it or, or uh, pitting or something. But then you look at the two on the left, there's some degradation there or more, much more pitting. So. That's interesting. I, I don't know if that's just an optical illusion. Well, again, this whole thing is not real, right, Ken? So uh, that's right. Yeah, this is this is all a conspiracy. This actually has not happened. Um, yeah, I don't. This has all been photoshopped or AI generated. All right, and Kilo nineteen says that was uh, that was the left side was pier side. Yeah, uh, left side faces river. All right. Interesting. Um, Anyway, just uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this because you know you guys have some interesting perspectives. We you know we all do, but um, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at this process getting the New Jersey into dry dock, I strongly recommend you check out the Battleship New Jersey's YouTube channel, their Facebook page, their Instagram. They're posting at least once a day. 
And if you have any additional curiosity on top of that, uh, if you want to keep the gossiping going, check out the Facebook group, uh, Museum Ships. Connor here, he's one of the administrators. What, what's one of the biggest repeated comments that you're seeing on the Facebook group, Museum Ships? Is it being reactivated? Is it being is it being sent back into service? Is it going I through that post? I have seen that post minimum ten times a day since uh -huh. that happened. Wow. And uh, yeah, I like I'm 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 borderline at this point. I'm starting to wonder what's going to happen the next time there's a dry docking because we actually still get the occasional thing about Texas asking if they're going to make a run again. So. <laughs> um, well, answer the question. Answer the question. So, is the New Jersey being reactivated? Well, I'm not part of the New Jersey team, although, just as an educated guess, as someone who's spoken to the team there, I would hesitate to say yes. I think <laughs> he's probably just going to stay as a museum. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Kid, on the other hand, obviously they're planning to reactivate her. Yeah. Uh, I mean, simple. It's a reactivate. <laughs> Oh, it hasn't been deactivated? Yeah. No. The whole reason it's down here, it's on occupation duty. That's what Rizzuto was down here for. <laughs> so uh, there'll be USS Kid Dash One, USS Kid Dash Two <laughs> in service. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Six six one six sixty one dash one. And uh what is it? A hundred? DDG one hundred? Nine nine three and then one hundred, yeah. Oh, nine nine three too, yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> one hundred dash three, yeah. Okay. Um but yeah, but I would say though, in general, the oh, that's a great shot. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. But go ahead, Connor. What we're saying? Yeah, I would say though, what what the New Jersey has done with this dry docking has really, I honestly think, has brought a lot of attention to museum ships as a whole. And I hope as other museums uh, get more vocal about their plans to dry dock, that we start seeing more. People like go, oh, I want to see this happen again. So they redirect. So who knows? Like Grant, I'm thinking more towards your guys, you guys compared to me. Uh, I'm still at least four, five, six years out. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's just I really hope this brings more attention to the work that has to be done to maintain these boats because it's a lot more than just simply paint it. Yeah, which yeah. seems to be some people's opinion about the entire. Plus Dang. what we do, plus what we do is we get it into the public. We already have a built-in fan base, yes. all of the ships, but it gets into those people that are not, uh, say, Navy or architect fans or museum ship fans, that these eventually will be the last remaining veterans of World War II. Yeah. yeah. And once, and that's, these are the things to keep them alive. They're going to the hospital to yeah. get preserved and to stay alive, you know, for future generations uh, as World War II, eventually Korea, and as eventually Cold War veterans pass away, these will be those veterans that it will remain and, and, uh, and be there for people to enjoy and learn from. Yeah, yeah Shane, Shane makes a good point. You know, uh, it, it's going to be to the point where there are no more World War II veterans. I just interviewed a World War II veteran. I think it was about two weeks ago in Ohio. He was 101 years old. Oh, geez. Yeah. Now, granted, real sharp, you know, still driving. But I mean, just be a matter of years and then they're going to be gone. And all that remains or all that will remain are these guys. Yeah. These guys. Yeah. So when you when you look at it that way, I mean, it's like how could you not you know fall in love with this? Now of course the cod a couple of years ago, I wish I had a picture of it right now, went went through an extensive dry docking process, had to have uh, part of the uh, uh, the bow structure you know totally rebuilt, and while that generated a lot of interest in the museum ship community, I don't think it generated a lot of interest in just the general population as much so as something like the New Jersey did just because of its sheer size. Sheer size. And I, and I say this as someone who has to interpret for a non warship our ships are just attention getters. Like yeah, the big yeah. guns attract people's attention, like regardless of whether or not they're really into Navy vessels or not. Um, and uh, that's something I've always noticed. I mean, 
on museum yeah. ships, with few exceptions, the military ships always get more reactions and posts than the civilian ships, like, say, the Kiwaitan or uh, the Queen Mary, although she's the rare exception where you will sometimes see her get over the warship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even for us, I mean, this doesn't happen at the kid, but even for us, when people come visit us, they're saying, oh, look at the battleship, right? Like, it just, there's something in people's minds. And the, the, the top five YouTube channels are all the battleships, right? So yeah. uh, on YouTube itself, people see the battleship as, like, naval power and flexing your muscle and... Uh, you know, protecting our interests, you know, much more than other very valuable ships as well. So at the, bu at the Buffalo Naval Park, you're basically saying when people, uh, you know, walk through occasionally, people will notice the Little Rock and call it a battleship. Absolutely. Every day. I hear it every day. You do. And I, I don't, I won't correct people because, uh, you know, then you're just going down that path of, yeah. well, we're a cruiser and what's the difference between a cruiser and battleship? And, and I mean, I do if I'm working with people, but Walking along the promenade there, I mean, it's it's just very prevalent that battleship. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Dutchman, sure, absolutely. South Dakota class. <laughs> oh boy. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, I mean, hey, who says South Dakota class? I did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, Tim. What were you gonna say? Oh, I was just I was telling Shane they absolutely call kid a battleship all the time. Really. And, Absolutely. And one of the things that we do for our tour, when that little platform that's right there before you start walking down the gangway in the photo, our first stop is right there talking about the ship as a whole. And we educate them right there. Okay. When people see the kid, the first thing they say is, oh, look at the battleship, but it's a battleship. It's a destroyer. And here's the difference. So it's, it's, an, it's a nice gateway to educate a little bit. Mm -hmm. It is. And if people are on board and they say that, yes, like we, that's part of our conversation as well. But I mean, you know, for the hundreds of people that are just walking by and you just hear it walking by someone on a sidewalk, I won't oh, yeah. say, I won't say anything, but yeah. I don't say <laughs> uh, let's see here. I'm going to pull up some other pictures. Let's move on to so battles. Battleships are like the Kleenex, right? So that's what we're saying. Like no one says yeah. tissue paper, or, or, or uh, you know, they all use the term yeah. Kleenex, right? Yeah. So, like, the brand has gone to every ship almost, the battleship brand. Yeah. Let's see here. I'm going to pull Thanks up. for everyone being here. This is great. Yeah. <clears throat> we, have a, we, have a great uh, we have a great viewership right now. Great turnout tonight. Well, based on what we were just talking about, yeah, everyone wants to hear about battleships, even <laughs> though, you know, yeah. whether it's a cruiser or destroyer. All right. So, this picture was kind of cool. And unless you know what you're looking at, you might not recognize it, but that is the absolute bow of the New Jersey. Here's a side picture here, but going back. So that is the the tip, the forward tip. And it just kind of shows that just the sheer size of this battleship in dry dock and the reason i say that is because you you check out these these again these photos are incredible but as they're walking along and you see the bow there off in the distance again getting another idea of the size then they hit you with something like this <laughs> <laughs> where they they're literally crawling under this huge i i don't know i i question i question whether i'd be able to do that i did that under texas and galveston you did oh, wow. yeah they they had like the uh the keel the the i forget the term they had for it but it was basically walking the keel from the bow to the stern post yeah mm -hmm and you're going along it just like that you're walking right beside the keel box and at points see they, they've got room where they're standing right there you see how the guy on the right is is his knees kind of bending a little bit yeah yeah uh, on texas right around center line uh center line lengthwise um yeah you're you're down to where you're doing the squats and really? walk yeah it, it it was fun it was fun um, what, did you I hear had, any creaking or groaning or anything like that? I did not, but 
go if you scrolled back to that picture of a uh, side shot of her nose her uh, her bow um texas has a unique little form uh right at the bottom to where there's almost like a hole punch through it and yes, it, i know what you're talking about yeah, yeah it has something to do with with uh bars going out for for mines or uh, uh or something like that and so we were able to actually stand there and using that hole to look through that attachment point we were able to look and see the movement of the dry dock up and down with the rip. And it was just, it was surreal to actually see the battleship moving in relation to the dry dock off to the side of it. Cause the nose was sticking out over another barge. It wasn't inside the dry dock. Mm. And uh, yeah, that was really cool. Are you claustrophobic at all? Me? Yes. Um, Apparently a very tiny bit because I went down on in uh, about a week ago down in the crawl spaces in the stern of the kid uh, back under Shane would know at the uh, the steering gear room mm -hmm. and it's a whole it's it's very mm -hmm. tight little squares there's no room to stretch out or anything and the lightning holes are set up in a way that if I'm gonna go from from square to square i've got to lay down and just pull myself through and it's it hurts the knees it hurts the shoulders the elbows and i got about three deep in there trying to get an eye, eyeball on something and i started trying to back out and i'm like uh this is a little you know my belt's catching or whatever <laughs> and after about that was the longest damn five minutes of my life yeah uh, but that, that's the only thing that's really tripped me out. Texas, the crawl under Texas didn't bother me at all. Well, do me a favor and let me back up here. Are you talking about like going through lightning holes like this? No, these are absolutely round lightning holes. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. And they are horizontal instead of vertical. Yeah. So I <clears throat> pull myself through kind of like doing a breaststroke. Shane Shane has done um, several videos um, over the years getting into those spaces. And not, I, uh, not, not uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, oh, well, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. But I thought, I thought you were kind of going through spaces. Maybe it was a little rock and not necessarily the Sul the, the Sullivan's, but um, I've seen you <laughs> crawl through these spaces. And when I visited the Naval park and I talked to Shane and I, I've asked him, it's like, so, and, and we've, we've, we've done heights, heights. I don't do heights. I do not do well with heights either. <laughs> for some reason, Shane, Shane doesn't have a problem with either heights or oh, no. being in tight spaces because as he's described it, he'll crawl in somewhere. And if you get hung up, you just kind of fidget around until you figure your way out, right? Well, the where Tim is talking, it is extremely tight. Uh, and so you'll have like, say, like, a, <laughs> like a, a plate of metal in front of you with like two or three holes but not much to grab onto when you're trying to go through it. Okay. So you're balancing yourself on these lightning holes, lightening, right? That's what we're not saying yeah. lightning, like, but light lightning. And so the, the, probably the closest video is when we'd have to go into a, a fresh water tank uh, and you have to climb through the baffles and the framing with these holes, but there's not much else. So these you're looking down, right? So those are yeah. deck, those are deck hatches. Right, but they would be potentially like that size, but there you're looking at them face on as opposed to go looking down. So okay. you have to put your body through those and then reach to the framing or whatever on the other side. And uh, that could be, yeah, that could be very tenuous, I'd think. Yeah. Uh, especially if you're tr if you can't turn around and you're trying to go backwards through that. Imagine that trying to get yeah. where you where you can't see where your feet are being placed and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it, I'm comfortable with it. Um, I might be uh, a little too chubby for some holes, uh, but <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, I know exactly what Tim's talking about. And, and I've done a video about like, why do we flood the transom? And those, if someone watches that video, I peek the camera down there a little bit. And that's exactly where Tim is talking about. That, that um, is the transom, yes. 
Yeah. So if you want to see what he's actually talking about, I dropped the camera. Ours are flooded because we took off our props. But you can, you, I drop the camera and I look around a little bit. And so you'll be able to see those lightning holes. Uh, and that, yeah, that, that could be tenuous because there's not much to grab onto, I think, once you're getting into another space. Right. And if you go back and look at any of the wreckage from the Johnston uh, from the, on the upper part of the, of the trench where they found the debris field at first, not, not when Parks and Victor dove down into the trench and found the hole, but the wreckage just scattered through the field, the debris field. Um, there is a picture of this white lattice work that a lot of people thought was the, was the pilot house with the, with the portholes on it. And it's actually this area that we're talking about, and it's just all twisted and mangled. And you can see those lightning bolts that we're talking about and how close they are together. Uh, it's, it's just, yeah, I, I don't like going back there if I don't have to. Uh, so you, you definitely need a second pair of eyes. Let's see, Tim, have you ever gotten stuck? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I got stuck. Um, in the forward engine room, crawling underneath the walkways, mm -hmm. uh, the catwalks, uh, in and around pumps back around 2004, 2005. And yeah, yeah, something similar to that. And what um, happened? Uh, what, what, I mean, so you crawl in, what it, so what happened? Well, we had the British History Channel, the UK History Channel there, and they were filming. Um, we had some sea cadets there reenacting as 18-year-old sailors. And it was the end of the day, and it was this very pretty brunette uh, History Channel person. And uh, early days of digital cameras and everything. And I was actually going to ask her if she could go to dinner afterwards. And she... Uh, <laughs> She's going up the ladder out of the forward engine room, and you hear ding, 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 ding. And she panics, and she says, oh, no, the memory stick with that great British Cockney accent. Wait, and hold on hold on a second. Hold on a second. So just so you know, your feed is breaking up yeah. slightly, just slightly, okay? So I want to make sure I got this. So you heard this clinking falling down, and it was, what was it that she dropped? A memory stick. Ah, memory stick. Thing. Okay, okay. And on right. this memory, they had their storyboards. Okay. So we scoured, you know, the catwalks and everything. It's not there. It's in the bilge. So we pulled up plates trying to see if we could spot it. And so I got chosen to go down into the bilge. And I'm crawling through a lightning hole. And they've actually got a picture of me. The front half of me is taken out of, of the beam. And then they... Team, took a picture of me and, me and when you put them together they be bisected by an IB you know, a magician lady in half stuck there for five, ten minutes so I was able to free myself in loose. I think we've lost him I was going to say yeah, I, think that's, yeah. I wanted to hang on as long as I could because I wanted to hear it's like alright did he get stuck or not did he get the memory stuck yeah. or not so yeah all right. I gave up and working my way out. And as I stepped out and crawled up onto the catwalk, I looked down, got the memory stick hidden up under the lid of the eye beam. We could have just reached down and picked it up. All thing. Gave their stick back. We all got out of the room and uh, I went home. I, I thought that was, really, that was done. But so you got the memory stick, but you 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 really truly weren't stuck. You just kept crawling and crawling until you got it. Uh, no, I, I when I got out, uh, we called. But she was just like, oh, "Forget about it. Let's get out of here." Uh, two hours of crawling. I had my head, my arm. Mm -hmm. just, it was not a fun time. Mm -hmm. We might have um, to ask him to log off and log back on, maybe. Yeah, I was gonna say. So, mm -hmm. so Tim, do, do me a favor, and if you can log off and then log back on and see if that fixes it, because we ah. kind of heard, heard your story and we kind of didn't. Okay, so okay. sorry. Uh, this is from that video. Why do we flood the transom? 
And so this is what he's talking hey, about. Hunter, so, did you pull this up? No, I did. No, that oh, was, you saw it. Uh, Shane. Oh, nice job, Wait. Shane. Way to yeah. go. So this I is me either. looking. Yeah, this is me looking down. Okay. Into, and so he would have to, what he's saying is he was, though, there's two lightning holes. And so he would be crawling through those into another space and then into another space and then into another space. So <laughs> when we talk about lightning holes, you can see how tight that is. It, it gives some perspective yeah. of yeah. how tight that is. If there's the compartment checkoff list in front of you, you could already see a frame right there on the bottom. Uh, so oh. you're, you're crawling and then you're trying to climb as you're crawling through those things. So I just wanted to share that. I could. Yeah, that, that would be a big. That would be a big hell no for me. Um, yeah, I would like to point out that in our comment section we have uh, received a number of former Iowa sailors who have entered the chat. Iowa and, uh, they've been, yeah, they've been talking amongst themselves for basically the entirety of our story, and. Oh. Uh, yeah, so late 80s, and uh, there's some interesting they're talking about like when she was in the dry dock. Well, because yeah, not the, like when they were, okay, all I haven't, time. I mean, uh, that, that's kind of more your area than mine. I, I always, I always awesome. tell people it's like Connor works the levers and dials behind the scenes. So if you got people, I, I actually I wonder if any of them were on the New Jersey as it was going through the Panama Canal, hmm. um, because. I've been I've been thinking about doing a video about the Iowa class battleships going through the Panama Canal because their beam was 108 feet and the width of the Panama Canal is 110. Yeah, two um, feet, one foot on either side. Yeah, but the Panama Canal, unbeknownst to well, a lot of people, is that they installed these dense rubber mats on either side of the canal to keep these uh, ships from beating the hell out of the side of the canal, which would have been fine if you're talking about a ship with a beam of like 95 feet, right. 98 feet, 100 feet. Then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. here comes the Iowa class, which was designed to fit through the pan. I mean, its design was dictated. It's like one of the things that has to do is go through the Panama Canal. Hey, no problem. We'll make it 108 feet wide because the Panama Canal is 110. Well, not unless the Panamanians installed these rubber mats. Mm -hmm. And so they installed these rubber mats. And I, I wonder if some of these guys, some of these people that are commenting might have been, or might have had knowledge of that because apparently as the New Jersey, and I'm sure it happened to the Wisconsin, you know, the, the Missouri, um, you know, the Iowa, if they had to go through as they rubbed along the sides, it created a lot of friction. As a result, it created a lot of heat. Hmm. And yeah, what, and was that, what was that year? I think it was 1984. Okay. Uh, well, we have one guy who was on the New Jersey from 83 to 87. So if anyone knows, feel free to speak up in the comments and I'll promote it. Yeah, apparently they had to hose down the side of the battleship with uh, fire hoses. Now, we do <laughs> have another question quickly. And Go I'm going to ask, I was hoping to ask Tim, but uh, I'll ask Shane while he's here. Uh, do you think that with both Texas and the New Jersey doing dry dock tours, has the idea of doing tours while museum ship in dry dock has now been normalized and will become potentially the standard going forward? Oh, good I would, I would hope so. Uh, okay. We have already had discussions. Uh, from what I've been told, Don John at, from Paul at the yeah. COD and our own research that Don John in the Erie, Pennsylvania does not allow it. So we are hoping that we can, uh, you know, continue those discussions with them uh, when we get ready to go after we raise the $13 million. Uh, because we can see, you know, how much of a moneymaker it can be, how much interest there is in it. And, uh, you know, some deal, some contract can maybe be worked out uh, mm -hmm. to where they would allow that. But yeah, I think Paul from the COD, we were able to go because we're part of the museum community. Yeah. So we did see her in dry dock and walked under her and stuff like that. But for, I, I don't believe that is a common occurrence with Erie, Pennsylvania and Don John uh, Shipyard. So mm -hmm. that's something that we would work with them 
Because what we were ideally what we would do is take the Sullivans and the Croker at the same time. That was something I wanted to ask you because I only became aware of that becoming an idea after our last uh, after our last episode. Uh, was that an idea that you guys were really thinking about potentially? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the actually Don John would be able to hold all three of our ships at the same time. Really, that's, how, that's how big it is. That's how large it is. Yeah, but it's uh, we. Not would, in- the largest Lakers, so that doesn't surprise me at all that it could fit them all. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, the, I think the dock is one thousand fifty feet or something like that. So, kind of nesting where the way they are now, uh, yeah. that would you'd only need eight hundred feet, roughly, you know, or so nine hundred feet. Um, that won't be that we won't be doing that, but uh, yeah, that is something that we'd like to do all at once, and so to be able to do tours of both the Croker and the Sullivans uh, <clears throat> would be something that would bring a lot of uh, recognition to Don John. And uh, we want to be, we want to kind of say that Erie, Pennsylvania is now their home for four months or five months, mm-hmm. right? And to welcome people from Erie and Pennsylvania, North, you know, North uh, West Pennsylvania. And so, uh, yeah, that's something. And we would use these Texas, New Jersey, potentially kid as the, as a standard, as you said, going forward to say, this is now a common ally. This is now a common thing. It, uh, you know yeah. what? It would be cool to be able to go down there and check this out. Yeah. Let, if you do let me know, I'll get tickets. Uh, <laughs> All right. We'll do. All right. So of course. Yeah. And uh, that would be fantastic. Um, huh, now I'm kind of low key wondering what our local shipyards regulations are on that. So yeah. yeah. Please yeah. do the research. Yeah, yeah, as you guys will, of course. Yeah, I'm we curious. obviously yeah. would. Yeah. Um, uh, but I would totally come to Erie to check that out. Well, and when you see these people walk around, you know, a ship like this in a dry dock, you know, of course, you know, the, the water level on the side of those walls, you know, is obviously well over their heads. But, I mean, it it's, it's kind of a, a creepy feeling, I would imagine. And then you see a picture like this underneath the ship, again, the creepy factor <laughs> just just goes up exponentially. Um, so what you're saying is you would have a trouble walking the whole length, the whole keel. You'd be worried that the blocks would collapse or something, and you'd get. Uh, you know what? I don't even know if it needs to be. I don't. It doesn't even need to go that far. You know what is your fear, Ken? What is your fear? It's like well, so if you had to actually, you know when it comes to somebody being claustrophobic yeah of course you consider the fact that okay the blocks could collapse or the yeah the ship it's just it's just knowing how much weight is above your head and quite frankly it's not supposed to be ever above your head so that those are the things that pop into my mind and then and i'm sure they don't pop into yours but that's that's the kind of stuff that pops into my head. Now, at the same time, would I force myself to go under there and see these miscellaneous hatches, or what? What do you think these things are bolted to the bottom of the hull? Um, I would say that they're like their rendition of blanking. You know, yeah. they they would have had sea chests and uh, ability to bring wa- wa- uh, seawater in for the different systems, especially because of. Uh, all oh. of the engine rooms and stuff like that, and the so, so you, you, you think they're you think they're caps or they're blanks going over like the raw water intake? I, I think I, I haven't seen any very many like this. Usually, they just take steel and weld it. Yes. So you still see the circular outline. There's, uh, there's some of those too in other pictures you can see. Oh yeah. All right. Well, then maybe we should maybe we should keep going and and we'll find some more of what maybe Shane's talking about here. Um, you know, pictures of, of people examining the hall, parts of the hall. But, you know, look past these two guys here and you'll see the cribbing, yeah. you know, underneath. All it is is just a couple of two by fours. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Being a little dramatic there, Ken. Uh, it's yeah. a little bit more than that. But that's on, on you know, quick glance, that's, that's what it looks like to me. I'm going, what? Um, move, oh, I guess that was it. Oh, what? I thought there was a whole other. I thought I had a whole other section. No, oh, maybe I should. Oh, see, if, take this take this picture, Ken, right? Yeah. So you're walking the keel. Look at, you got the sunlight, you know, about uh, 40 feet away each side. Yep. So you, yep. you're you at least, you know that there's a potential escape for your sad butt. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. 
right? That, yeah. That's true. Yeah. And, and if, if something were to happen, you know, you'd hear some cracking, you hear some creaking, you, you know, just get the hell out of the way. I get it. it. But it's, you know, for me, claustrophobia, it's just a mental thing. And if I could talk my way through it, like you can, apparently, you know, I'd probably be fine, but yeah, I, I would do it. I would do it. Um, my well, big thing right time situation, you'd have to do it. It's like it's like when I climbed to the top of what was that the 06 level on the little rock with you. It's like I didn't want to be up there, but I did it. Right. Kind of sucked. Yeah, yeah like, you had a little trouble. And yeah. don't get me wrong, I I have much more aversion to height than closed spaces. So I had some trouble up there on that uh SPS 30 platform as well. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, I wanna on, on this picture here. Uh, you know, everyone looks to the left. Look at the upper right hand corner. You see these tires on the side of the uh, the dry dock? Yeah. I think that I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> yes, um, I think that's like a blocker of some sort, not yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a bumper, yeah, bumper, yeah, some kind of yeah, neat. I, I've never seen one like that before. Pretty, pretty ingenious setup. Yeah, here yeah. we are again. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it, 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 it bumps it. Right for the hull, and then it also has a, a little rotational, you know, yeah. so it, it can go back. So it's not rubbing, so to speak. Yeah. You know, if it's a stationary thing and you're rubbing against it, now it kind of rolls with it, you yeah. know. Oh, all right. Uh, hello. We got Tim. Tim back with us. Looks like your signal's nice and strong. Fantastic. Yeah. Hey, Tim, uh, I'm going to ask you the question that uh, I asked Shane because you dipped off right before I asked. Yeah. Um, Basically, the question was, with the Texas and New Jersey both having dry dock tours, do you think that will become the new standard for museum ship dry dockings come going forward? And are there any plans for your ship to do that? I've been seeing that question pop up a lot. I think I saw it on, on museum ships. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely a moneymaker. So, you know, when your primary moneymaker is away from home, and not available to the public to tour as it normally is. Uh, I think dry dock tours, if the liability and the insurance and the shipyard uh, can come together and allow it, yes, I think I think you know dry dock tours are a great way to support the museum while uh, while your money maker is is out of play. Because um, for us, I can tell you right now this is going to be a lot like pushing reset and going all the way back to 1982 because we got a museum building there but will the museum draw as many people as it would when kid is sitting there and the answer to that is no they're not going to come to that museum building as much um but having a dry dock tour we're we're, we're going to try to arrange it if the shipyard and the insurance will will work with us on it uh that's in our budget so Okay. Well, there's that answer. Good to know. Yeah. Um, and so do we have any, any more comments, guys? Yeah. Let's as far see. as dry dock tours, Texas is not the originator of them. <laughs> the first ones I heard about go all the way back to the 2000s with the Constellation in Baltimore. Oh. Oh, yeah. Good point. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. I, can I wasn't that. involved back then. So. Yeah. Yeah, was I, I to crochet to Travis for the Texas team. They did a great job and a great setup for their dry docking. But yeah, I remember I remember reading about uh, about Constellation and them doing the dry dock tours. And the one I remember the most about was actually where the federal lawsuit came about because of ADA and why Constellation in 1851, I think, uh, gun sloop, wooden gun sloop, ended up having to put a chair lift uh on board as Ooh. a result of that lawsuit so. mm. oh oh ada being american uh disability right. right they had it set, that particular dry docking and and i'm just going off memory what i was reading they had kind of scaffolding set up around the around the perimeter of the ship and they wanted to it was the the hard type where you've got the walls uh, on the side where you can look out the side and then everything, you know, you got stuff above you to protect you. Uh, so people were able to go up into the scaffolding and walk around the ship and watch the shipyard workers do it like they did with the old chisel type tools and everything from, from, uh, the okay. Internet. And they had a webcam. Of course, the stuff we're using tonight was, was 
you know, is light years ahead of what they had in 2002, three, four, five, whenever that was. Um, and they had a webcam station set up for people, but apparently this guy just didn't like that setup. He wanted to go up on the scaffolding and he couldn't. Um, and uh, it ended up in, in the courts. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me uh, bring up that picture again, too, for Tim. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Can you do that? Uh, let me see. Present. Share screen. And while Shane's working on that, again, you know, this is Museum Ship Mafia just talking about the USS New Jersey battleship going into dry dock. If you guys are just tuning in, we're happy to have you here. So, Shane, what are we looking at here? And Tim, that's, do you recognize this? No, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That, that looks like where, is that in the transom? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I was crawling through last week. Yeah, that's tight. Yeah. And you can see how thin it is. So when you're trying to support your leg on that to mm -hmm. go in the next oh. tightening hole, man, that just cuts. It, yeah. it hurts on that bone, shin bone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, those, those are the pictures that I had for this evening. Um, so uh, when is the New Jersey supposed to return back to Camden? As I understand it, they're supposed to be in dry dock for 60 days. Yeah, June, I think they want to be back at, in June. Okay. okay. Ooh. Yeah, 60 days. Yeah. Um, you know what? Another, I, I before we shut this down, um, one last thing I wanted to point out here. And, of, and of course, you know, I, I tend to focus on some of the weirdest details. But if you look at this silvery line, this silverly, silvery horizontal line leading back from one of the inboard propellers, those are the sacrificial anodes. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And what I learned from the USS Cod being in the dry dock, the Cod had anodes kind of all over its hull too, but they were the wrong anodes. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were mm -hmm. anodes for um, salt water, not for fresh water, which I can't remember which is which magnesium for salt water and aluminum for fresh water or vice versa. I think, uh, I think, I think it's aluminum for salt water and magnesium for yes. fresh water. That's what I think it is too. Oh, oh, you, you think so? Okay. Okay. Zinc is also for fresh. Uh, for yes, zinc. Yeah. Zinc. zinc. I think aluminum and magnesium were for the fresh. Yeah, aluminum is for the fresh. Yeah. Okay. So no, then, no, magnesium is too, I believe. So, yeah. Well, the cod, the, whatever the cod had these sacrificial anodes, and everyone was saying, "It's like no problem. We've got these sacrificial anodes." And then all of a sudden, comes out of dry dock, and it's like, "Oh, well." The yeah, those are the wrong anodes because <laughs> they were. Yeah, I think that's what they're doing with the New Jersey because they originally put on saltwater anodes, and then they realized where they are in the river is mostly freshwater. I see. So I think they're converting them. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. they're not saying that New Jersey's got zinc right now. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks, guys, for making those comments. So, so what we're seeing here in the picture, these are, are zinc. Okay, and that's interesting because if you look in the picture, you can see how some of the material has spread down as they, well, they're sacrificial anodes. As they sacrifice themselves, they're supposed to de deteriorate instead of the hull. Well, that material has to go somewhere, and it, you, you get this kind of like a, a sooty, I don't even know what you want to call it, shadowing, you know, and all of these anodes, I'm assuming, are going to be removed and replaced. And so the question I had is, like, I wonder if they're the wrong anodes, the wrong material. Uh, yeah, they are. The, they need to switch to fresh water. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. If they took it as the Navy gave it to them, those, those are zinc anodes for salt water. Yeah, for salt water. That, we ended yeah. up with on KID, and we needed the fresh water ones. And you can look and still see the stamping in the metal on our anodes, and they're still intact. And that's Ooh. because there's, there's been no salt water to degrade them that badly. You're yeah. wait, are you are you you're talking about the anodes that are on the hull right now? On the kit, yeah. Okay. And of course you can see them because when the water level drops and you can get up close, you can so you can kind of routinely inspect those, right? Right, right. And okay. for a long time people were like, Wow, you know, y'all y'all have 
you know, y'all must be having cathodic protection from somewhere. And it's like, well, no, we don't have any cathodic protection other right. than the, the passive stuff with the zinc. Uh, and then we got to looking at it more. And it's like, and, you know, everybody calls the anode zincs sometimes, even when they're aluminum and they're, that's just, the they are. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, ours are actually zinc, come to find out. And yeah, they're, they haven't been doing a damn thing. Right. So, that's the same thing that happened to the Sullivans too. We did not convert them when we brought it from Philadelphia from, uh, you know, uh, zincs to then freshwater. We just never converted them over. Uh, and so they were on, but they weren't doing any protecting. <laughs> did that take a lot of the blame when the Sullivans took on that water? No, but it was something that was definitely discussed that uh as a contributing we, factor yeah and we need to absolutely correct that when we go to dry dock as well and i don't know if i think everyone as maybe tim was just saying you know you're saying oh yeah yeah, yeah we have protection we have protection we have protection well did anyone go dig the the hole one foot deeper to see the different kinds of uh uh, protections you know anodes did we yeah, did anyone yeah, do you, that you have anodes no problem we've got anodes we've got anodes everywhere and exactly. then we've got anodes yeah. no one actually Good. thought to say um what what material are they right. yeah and yeah. we're next to an underground pipeline an old oil pipeline too uh probably about 60 70 feet off of our starboard beam and all the engineers the old petroleum engineers around were like you're protected by by that uh, right about where the water is uh, the, the shoreline is there they're like you're protected in that field that's why those those anodes aren't deteriorating and it, it took forever for me to find somebody at exxon that would comment and finally they looked at it they're like dude that, that pipeline is out of commission it has been for decades there's no wow. protection in that pipeline <clears throat> okay well that shoots that down Every, everyone's got theories right yeah. um yeah let's see well as i said a few moments ago those are the ends that's the end of the pictures you guys have any other comments or or well yeah comments you want to make about um new jersey for, the new jersey, for the new jersey yourself i think this just goes to show the advantage of having a ship in fresh water um She's in absolutely amazing shape, all things considered, especially for her age and how long she's not been in dry dock. And uh, that just means that realistically, her haul is probably going to go on for a lot longer. Uh, so that's great to see. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do have some breaking museum ship news, by oh, the way. Lay it on us. What do you got? Uh, uh, so it just popped up on Museum Ships. Our founder, Pim Weingarten, posted it. Uh, it looks like that the USS Ares, a Pegasus-class hydrofoil, will be moving to Key West. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I she... have no idea about this. <laughs> yeah, do, you, like, do, you know what, do you know what these hydrofoils look like? They're crazy ships. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, there's, um, there's a post on Museum Ships just now. It was posted less than half an hour ago, uh, but the city of Key West says tomorrow at nine at nine o'clock Eastern time, uh, there will be a presentation about moving the USS Ares to Key West to become a permanent floating museum. Uh, so it looks like tomorrow morning we will have an announcement on our hands uh, about a museum ship moving from the central U.S. I think she's up, not up the Mississippi, but she's up one of those rivers. She's all uh, Mississippi on one of those small rivers in Missouri. Okay, so she might be passing you guys in a little while. Possibly. They may take her. I think they took her originally up there via, uh, like, the through Alabama to the Tennessee River. I don't think she okay. ever So they may take that route again, or they may come by us. It'd be yeah. nice to see her. Yeah. So if anyone's a fan of hydrofoils, <laughs> uh, keep, keep an eye on that. Uh, it could charge for rides. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, yeah. one, of these, one of these days, I need to get down to Canada's hydrofoil uh, down in Quebec. I need to go see that one of these days. It's a museum now. I um, Are you trying to find a picture, Ken? Yeah, I couldn't find 
this one's kind this one kind of sucks because that's about as big as I could get it. But that's um, her, yeah. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. But yeah, it's a crazy, it's a crazy hull design. And you know, uh, of course, if you look closely at the the picture, you'll see the stanchions or the struts for the hydrofoils. So as the ship increases speed it rise up rises up on the hydrofoils what this picture doesn't do justice though is the uh propellers are like way behind the ship on these extended it's just a crazy design i wish i could find a better picture i'll tell you um, what though, those little hydrofoils cool. had a bite to them because uh for facebook and social media whenever lsu is playing an sec team i find a, a museum ship in the state that we're playing against and uh, we played Missouri last year, and so I have kid trash talk the other ship. And uh, we, I, I looked it up, looked it up to see what her weaponry outfit was. Holy cats! She's like a murder hornet. She, she can rip, rip kid from over the horizon. Kid would never see her coming. You're talking about this thing right here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. First of all, take a look at what's on the bow. Yeah, you know, is that a five inch gun or is that a seventy six millimeter gun? I don't know what the hell that thing is, but look how long it is. We do. Yeah, it might be. Is it a five inch fifty four? I don't know. Yeah, it's, oh, no. it, it is. Uh, no, it's a it's a seventy six millimeter gun, so that's three inch. And then and then look at the look at the stern. Are those a ram? What the hell are those things? Are those a ram missiles? They're missiles. <laughs> Harpoon missiles, apparently. Har oh, har you know what? That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, kid wouldn't have a shot. Yeah. Well, kid, yeah. kid might have a shot. It just wouldn't have a second shot. Yeah. <laughs> right. It wouldn't land. Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> Thanks, Connor, for filling us in on that. No, I literally just saw that while we were doing this and so what's like, the propulsion on that ship is it just traditional steam turbine reduction um, gear? i don't know a propulsion um, with two mercedes-benz marine diesels on extended diesels, ships right yeah, okay. yes uh and then when she went into a uh, hydroborne mode apparently she ran off a one general electric lm 2500 gas turbine engine yeah, but see, so, but how does the propeller reach the water? It's on this extended, this extended. It, shaft. Must, it must be. I don't yeah. see any pictures. Oh yeah. my word. She she can go over 48 knots when she's out of the water. <laughs> That's nuts. That's amazing. Yeah. Which I'd like to point out though, just, just bragging, Canada's hydrofoil was faster. <laughs> In kilometers, I mean, right? yeah, we talked out at sixty-two. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. All right. Uh, since Tim is our guest tonight, we're gonna let him go first. Um, first of all, I want to I want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight and kind of gossiping with us on the uh, New Jersey wow. going into dry dock. It was a lot of fun. You know, normally we've got a special guest or something like that coming in, but if anytime we can make it just about us and talk about a cool uh, situation like the New Jersey going into dry, do dry dock. I'm all for it. And I appreciate everyone tuning in tonight and giving us your comments because if you have not watched one of our episodes before, hopefully you'll consider subscribing and joining us in the future. Uh, let's see. So let me get over to my notes here. Talking about the USS Kid. Like I said, we were fortunate enough to have Tim Nesmith, who's the superintendent of the USS Kidd Veterans Museum in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Check out the YouTube channel, USS Kidd Veterans Museum, or the website, ussskid.com. What's the latest and greatest uh, going uh, going on down there? You guys had a storm going through today. A storm going through. We, we shut down for safety. Uh, the, the, the parish, or for everybody else in the world, the county, uh, north, just north of us, took uh, some tornado hits. So it's not safe for man or beast to be out of the road or touring a museum show. Mm. Uh, but we will be open again tomorrow morning. And tomorrow is a very special day for us uh, because it is the anniversary of the kamikaze attack. Uh, mm. Normally, we have a ceremony at 1:55 in the afternoon when the when the attack occurred. 
that's open to the public. But uh, because of all our dry dock prep and what we're trying to do, uh, we just don't really have time to host a ceremony uh, for the public. Uh, so we put the word out earlier this week. It's not going to be open to the public, but we are going to take a live stream uh, a, a just a little short memorial service about what we're doing. We're going to call those guys' names out, the 38 guys that were killed from the crew and the pilot uh, they identified about 20 years ago now. Um, and we will lay a flower in the water for each one of them, ring the bell for them, close out the live stream, and get back to work. Uh, so we'll be doing that tomorrow. Uh, the link for the live stream will be going up on our social media pages tomorrow morning so that everybody can tune in um and meantime we're tinkering with the anchor one uh getting that ready to lower the anchor and raise the anchor um we are continuing to offload got all the depth charges off now except for three of them sitting on on the rail so little kids don't climb over where the gap in the in the rail is where the depth charge projector um we are offloading the last handful of artifacts this week and then the curatorial team is going to lend their muscle power to help me move all the old equipment everything out of the out of storage so uh we're 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 throttling but we're getting ready to, to leave the minute we get the water when you Yay. guys when you guys commemorate the uh the day of the kamikaze attack do you still have reenactment planes fly overhead no the the aircraft that was another part of the reason we stopped firing the guns uh because the aircraft are so expensive to get down here now we used to have a large complement of them in the in the region and uh now the closest ones i know of that fly on a regular basis or either in vicksburg or farther out for texas so it's, it's a little Cool. Alabama is able to get some, but when they fly over here, they're always wanting you know fuel costs and everything, and that, man, that just makes it expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I get that. Yeah, everything gets more and more expensive. Yeah. Um, Before I sign out, though, I just yeah, say, I've got a text conversation uh, myself and the great man Samansky, and he is admitting to me that. Kid is more of a busy girl than New Jersey herself because New Jersey just has the name. She was built in Philly, not in New Jersey. Kid was built in Carney, New Jersey. She is a Jersey girl just like <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. Are you telling me you're trading text with Ryan Szymanski right now? No, not right now. I, as soon as he started heading toward dry dock, I texted him. I said, Who's oh. more and he, he quizzed me and everything, and he finally admitted. He says, because she, she's originally from New Jersey, she's more of a Jersey girl. Okay. <laughs> New Jersey is New Jersey only in name. <laughs> got to take her to a diner. <laughs> I got to take her where I can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, anything else you wanted to add, uh, Tim, from the USS Kid? No, we appreciate the support of everybody out of the community. Appreciate you guys for that. And uh, just keep us in mind, keep safe, and hopefully we'll get the water we need. <laughs> yeah, again, Tim Nesmith, superintendent of the USS Kid. The USS Kid is working or in progress to go into dry dock. So if you want to support their efforts, check out their website, ussskid.com or do a search on their YouTube channel, USS Kid Veterans Museum. Just enter that in the search bar. It'll come right up. Whatever you can to support their efforts to get into dry dock, greatly appreciated. So, Tim, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. And let's see here. Moving on to, bear with me a moment. We've got the Buffalo Naval Park. Shane Stevenson, curator. Buffalo Naval Park. What's the uh, so you guys literally just opened last week, correct? Uh, we've been open, I think, since March twenty seventh. So it's been probably been a couple of weeks. We've been two weeks. Okay, two yeah, weeks. We've oh yeah, two weeks today probably. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah we, we've seen an uptick uh, so far. We, uh, of course, an Monday, uptick. An uptick. I mean, Monday should have like been been equal equaling your whole uh, yeah, you know, summer yeah. attendance, right? Because of the eclipse. Watch, what? Just for a few moments, okay. So they posted a video on the Buffalo Naval Park. Posted a video on YouTube, and for those of you that aren't aware, Buffalo fell into the uh, lane of totality for the eclipse on Monday. So. What did you get in the way of viewership uh, visitors in Buffalo and specifically to the Naval Park? Yeah, um, I, I don't think numbers for our whole county have been out yet. Um, you know, they were saying about 800,000 people coming to Buffalo. I, it certainly couldn't have been that. But it, we might have gotten 150, 200,000 people coming to Buffalo in, a, in as a whole. Um, <clears throat> what we did was we had the ships closed, but we sold like a day pass. So we had 300 uh, people on board. Uh, they were able to tour the ships on their own throughout the whole day, uh, leave, go get some lunch, come back. Uh, I offered a, a tour uh, of the Croker specifically um, and you know, just interacted with people, answered questions. And then we had the four minutes of totality and uh, and that was a really big thing. And then everyone, uh, so we served lunch and yeah, it was just a great day of interacting with people. Uh, we also had about 10 people from around the country stay on board uh, from Sunday night to Monday. And, and uh, so that was a nice thing. We prepped the state rooms. And uh, so, yeah, we are, you know, our seasons, we go from zero to 100 very quickly. And mm -hmm. so encampments, the eclipse, uh, this, you know, this week, uh, we have a Burren Kinnear, uh, uh, ceremony, uh, for those from, uh, Puerto Rico that served in the, uh, 65th infantry regiment in uh, Korea. So that is with one of our memorials. We have that ceremony there. Uh, we've already done a Vietnam veteran Memorial day ceremony, uh, our opening ceremony. So, yeah, I mean, veterans from all the counties around Western New York, have been using our facilities and museum ships as a backdrop for their own ceremonies. So, uh, yeah, we get, we're, we already are packed with events already. So, uh, on my end, um, you know, ramping up volunteers, we're going to have the Talos missile coming. Uh, probably we're trying to do it maybe around Memorial Day when we can get some critical mass as well. That's going to be a big thing that we release on social media. So we secured, I secured a Talos missile last year, did some prep work in the late fall. Uh, they're wrapped, they're, they've been shrink wrapped. They're indoors now at a company locally. It's going to come down the Buffalo River, get craned on, put into place. And so we're going to make that kind of a big deal. Uh, securing another Talos missile for the Little Rock. So the Talos missile is going to be craned on the uh, Little Rock from the water side, not from the dock side. Correct. Yeah. I was wondering about that because that means it'd have to be lifted over the the Sullivans to get yeah. to the Little Rock. I was wondering, it's like, how are they going to do that? Yeah, it's just a lot easier because now that you'll need a crane to go over the Sullivans, now you it's large enough to where we, now we don't have the space for it to move to mm -hmm. get there. So yeah. yeah, coming, it will be coming maybe a half a mile uh, down uh, the Buffalo river. And then you can see it right there, right onto the missile house where I filmed that eclipse video uh, or I'm sorry, on the main deck right below that. And then uh, hopefully we're still going to analyze uh, where the best placement is. Uh, but working with the company, we'll get it right into the missile house, hopefully the booster and the uh and the missile itself so we're and not putting any down by barge that that means they don't have to they don't have to rope it to the top of your red volkswagen jetta and go down the side streets and get the thing hauled over that way i well actually now that you say that i didn't want to say it but i'm 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 hauling it individually with my little red jetta yeah you're, I, I'm just, or you, at least the, you're hauling it to the barge yeah All right. Right. Um, <laughs> cool. All right. So you think that'll be around Memorial Day? That'll be pretty cool to, to yeah, see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking of probably like mid to late May. Yeah, absolutely. So again, I'm thrilled that we're the home now of the uh, Cruiser uh, Sailor Association records. 
Uh, and so I'm going to get some volunteers to get into that, get the finding aid created, get those organized, uh, other than what the creators have done, and then make that collection available to people who love cruisers. All right. So that was a cruiser, the Cruiser Sailor Association folded recently. And we were, thankfully, I worked hard to be awarded those records. And so we'll be the permanent home of that organization's records. And so that means I can open it up for people who are interested in researching uh, cruisers. So that will be, that's really fun. So that's one of my volunteer projects this year. Excellent. Um, Shane Stevenson, curator at the Buffalo and Erie County Naval and Military Park. Check out their YouTube channel. Search for Buffalo Naval Park in the search bar. Like I said, one of the things you're going to come up with is the video that Shane did on Monday as the solar eclipse was, or I should say, as the Buffalo Naval Park was in the path of totality for the solar eclipse. So that was very cool. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, we don't have John Epp with us tonight, but I will mention John Epp, curator of the USS Slater in Albany, New York, is normally with us. Uh, he got bumped because of Tim Nesmith being on. <laughs> but uh, if you tune in the second Wednesday, Wednesday of each month, you might see him back here. Check out the YouTube channel for the USS Sl Slater. Search for the USS Slater in the search bar. And also check out their website, ussslater.org. Connor, thanks for pulling that up. And as we always do, we're going to finish up with the Transportation Museum of Thunder Bay. Connor Kilgore, also the administrator of the Facebook group Museum Ships. Check out his handiwork there. And apparently there's a lot to be said about the USS New Jersey going into dry dock on the Museum Ships Facebook page. So you'll see all that communication going back and forth. What's the latest with TMTB.ca? Uh, well, for starters, that web the new website will be up hopefully by the end of this week. So that'll be exciting. That'll be tmtb.ca. It will be. Uh, yes. Well, that's the hope. I've been told. Okay. <laughs> so, All right. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. So uh, basically what's been happening is uh, <clears throat> we're not reopening until May. So we still got a little bit of time left until we... Uh, kick things into high gear and it's quite frankly because it's only getting comfortably warm now it's only sitting about plus 10 uh celsius so uh we need it to be at least that comfortable before we really start doing stuff because a lot of hosing a lot of cleaning things of that nature <clears throat> um oh so, excuse me yikes it's been a long day yeah. um so uh, other things we've been doing is uh, we have been meeting uh, with other historical organizations around the city. Uh, we're hoping to possibly do some work with them in the near future uh, towards maybe future displays uh, that cover other aspects of our region's history. Uh, we're also going to be having some meetings with uh, the city of Thunder Bay. Uh, one of the things we need to get done is we need to sort out our sort out our lease contract and get that settled because once that's done, we can put our plaque on display on property, our plaque that marks the Alexander Henry as a national heritage site. As she is one of the best preserved examples of the Canadian shipbuilding uh, programs of the 1950s. Uh, about 12 ships were built in that program for the Ministry of Transportation's Marine Service. And Henry is one of the very few that still exist. And she's one of the only ones that's still left in her Coast Guard configuration. So uh, that's Ooh. one of the reasons. Uh, other things of note, uh, we're going to be up to updating all our merchandise. Uh, so when our new website comes online, there will be a store. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to be doing international shipping right away, but uh, it will be there. And we're going to be getting new items, uh, new hats, jackets uh challenge coins that's the big one and uh we're looking forward to people seeing those and uh hopefully we get positive response and yeah that's basically about it uh we're just slowly gearing up for the season um we just got hopefully got some grant money to hire some summer students so that will help us as well and uh, it should be a great year. Uh, last year was fantastic for us, and we're hoping for another great year this year. Great. Yeah, you sent that text earlier today. Uh, we, we're part of like a little text group, and Connor said that he's got the approval to hire, would you say, five students? Looking That's forward to, yeah. Yeah, looking forward to hurting those cats. 
around the summer. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, good luck with that. Shane, Shane do, you have, uh, do you have college students either interning or, you know, just getting summer jobs at the Buffalo Naval Park? How does that work? No, we don't have, like, we don't have the infrastructure for uh, paid interns. Uh -huh. So I have had technically interns, but they're usually the ones that, um, you know, sometimes programs say it has to be paid. Sometimes it doesn't have to be paid. Uh, so I usually find interns, official interns, uh, that don't. But that's something that, I mean, right. Uh, Connor said he is five. John Epp. What, who's that guy again? John Epp? Yeah. Yeah. That guy don't remember. Uh, yeah. He said he had seven paid interns. So, yeah, I think so. so I'm, yeah. I'm wondering if that's something that maybe I should be exploring. <laughs> yeah. I, have, I, have a, I have a great set of volunteers. I have about 15 volunteers that love working with me in the collections and the artifacts, but they're mm -hmm. volunteers. They're not doing this for school. So there might yeah. be a difference, you know, so. Got it. Um, all right, Connor, uh, Connor Gil Kilgore. Curator. Yeah, Tim, Tim just said that his internet's up and down. Yeah, he sent me a text. And, uh, you know, like I said, storms have been going through there. So if that's weather related, I have no idea. But we were glad to have Tim with us um, while he could. Bad, <laughs> bad internet connection that happens from time to time. So we totally understand. Uh, Connor Kilgore, curator oh, at one. the Transportation Museum of Thunder Bay. Uh, also one of the administrators for the Museum Ships Facebook group. If you get a chance and you haven't been on there yet, you're going to love it. The stuff that they talk about, pretty interesting. Um, any last minute? Uh, any last words, Connor? Uh, no. Basically, support your local museum ship if you have, or your favorite if you don't have a local, and uh, visit all of us. Visit the Slater. Yeah. Visit the Kid. Visit uh, the Buffalo Naval Park. Visit me. Um, odds are, if you come to ours, I will be the one giving the tour. So. Uh, Feel free. Uh, but yeah, just support your local museum ship. I say that whenever I can. And uh, I've got a special tour coming up as a result. So oh, fingers crossed. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to the Transmuta Transportation Museum of Thunder Bay, ask for Connor. If you go to the Buffalo Naval Park, ask for Shane. Um, he'll take you to his office. <laughs> It's interesting. Oh, God, can you love my office? Isn't that I love great? your office. Yeah. I think your office is great. Connor, tell people how great Shane's office is. I didn't get to see his office. You didn't get to see his office? Yeah, oh, I, think was, I think I was off that day. I can't remember. Okay. But we didn't make it back in time. I don't no, even know if we got it back from Albany in time. I can't yeah, Mario, Mario gave me the tour. Shane's, oh, yeah. Shane's office is a trip. I, yeah. Anyway, it was so it was good to see. Anyway, um, like I always say, we cannot do this. The museum... Uh, Museum Ship Mafia video podcast. We can't do this without viewers and subscribers. So we were thrilled to have uh, all of you join us tonight to talk about the dry dock for the uh, USS New Jersey. Uh, tune in uh, the second week of Wednesday of each month. Next week, we'll have another great episode. So we'd love to have you uh, come back and join us. Um, like I always say, one of the simplest yet most effective ways to support these guys is to check out their YouTube channel, check out their videos, watch their videos, give them a thumbs up, give them a subscribe. And, you know, once they surpass a certain benchmark, YouTube uh, throws money back at them. So it, it's just a huge help. And of course, if you can uh, donate or support their cause, all the better. Uh, for Connor Kilgore, for Shane Stevenson, John Epp, who couldn't be with us tonight, and Tim Nesmith at the USS Kid. My name is Ken Stano with the YouTube channel History X. Thank you for joining us tonight, and I hope everyone has a great evening. Thanks, Good night, everyone. Everybody. Good night. And.